Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Creative Academy, your go-to source for accountability, coaching, and community for writers. I'm Crystal Stranahan, and today we're chatting about logo design and rebranding with author J.P. McLean. Welcome. And hi, our Crystal. Nice hi. To you. We have a tiny little delay on the audio, so for anybody out there watching, just uh, bear with us, and hopefully the internet will cooperate as we go forth. Um, to get started, can you tell us a little bit more about your books and what kind of things you write, and uh, yeah, where your background is? Sure. My uh, name is Joanne McLean. I use the initials JP for my pen name because Joanne is difficult for people to remember how to spell with the E's or with the hyphens or with the capital A or not. And I write fantasy fiction and I've been doing that for about nine years now. And I have seven books out in the urban fantasy or contemporary fantasy thriller series. Uh, the first five are out and uh, this, the last two are written and I'm just now in the process of rebranding so that um, I will get some new covers that are completely different than the covers that I have now. All right. The reason and there's a delay is because I live on this little island. We have satellite internet and it's a real pain, but um, we have to cope with it. The price you pay for living in paradise. <laughs> Um, so what was it that prompted you to do that redesign? You know, once you'd got everything settled and everything else, what were the sort of pieces that kicked off that process? Well, I was, I was kind of forced into it in some ways because, um, as I, I didn't, I didn't know how to do my own website. So I hired a local woman to do the website for me. And when she decided she was going to be retiring, I don't think that came first, but when I had the new two new books coming out, I was dreading having to go through that process again of sending her photographs of the um, book covers and Word documents with the text of the description and then go back and forth with her trying to get them up there on my website in a timely fashion so that people would be aware of it and it just became and, and the other thing was I had my blog post was a tab on the website but it actually wasn't attached to the website when I clicked the tab they went to a different website so the stats that I was getting on my website were meaningless and so it was time to bite the bullet and do my own website and I figured since I was going to be learning how to do my website I would take that opportunity to address some other issues that had come up with regard to the website the way it existed and what it looked like and the message it was sending and it wasn't accurate it wasn't the message i wanted to send especially with the last two books in the series coming out right okay so once you decided you were going to do a rebrand what what did you do where did you go who did you who did you approach it's a lot of questions i went to the creative academy <laughs> i did i i i I saw a um, rebranding, it was before I knew you, uh, or, or the, the Creative Academy, but I, I was online looking for information on branding and how to do it, and I came across um, Jessica Sprague's uh, course that she offered, if I'm saying her name correctly, yep. that she offered through the Creative Academy, and, um, and I took her course, and I downloaded her book, and um, I was... I was when I went through the process of taking a look at what the keywords that I would use to describe my product and then to find photographs that fit what I had in my head as, as what I thought were images that represented what my books were, I realized that, and I was surprised to, to learn that the beautiful pale blue calm ocean scene, which is kind of like from where I live, that was on my website was actually not very representative of what was inside the books. And the image that um, I needed was uh, bold, dark colors and, and quite different than what I had. Right. And so then once you decided to make those changes, did you, did you tackle that yourself? Is that something you tried to do on your own to create your logos and things? Uh, well, I, in terms of my, so there's two things there, you know, 
when you think about an uh, author logo or an author brand, um, I have one series of books, but it's not going to be the only series of books I have or the only books that I have. So, uh, but I always will write fantasy because I like that um, unexpected little twist in, in those types of books. So the brand had to reflect not the books that I had written, but any book that I might write. And so I thought the best way to brand myself is to do what I'd seen some other authors do. Um, some authors, for example, will have, as, as their brand, they'll have a, a gun. You know, thriller authors sometimes have guns. And sleuth authors will have, you know, the, the big pipe or a, a magnifying glass. And, and customized to, the, to their own. You know, maybe putting their initials around a symbol like that so that it's very distinguishable. And so I thought, well, that's what I would like to do with my initials, is I would like to make my initials my brand. So that's where I started. And I did draw up my initials, and, and I, I was so pleased with myself. I thought it looked terrific. And I went into our little town here and um, got a graphic designer to uh, copy the, my initials that I had. They were very um, stylistic. And I, I got them to make vector drawings of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that it. one. It's, it's a J and an M. That one. That one. There you go. And I also took the blood, the blood red color, which is the color that I want for my, um, my initials. And I thought, okay, well, this, this is good. I, I really like this. And so I thought, well, I'm going to uh, put it up on Facebook and see what my Facebook friends think of it. Well, my Facebook friends did not like it. <laughs> they said, oh, that looks like 911. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that was a fail. So then I took the, the McLean, the MM off, the, you know, the three dots to the right, thinking, well, I'll just go with the J. And I put that up. I said, how about this? Is this any better? And, and the response was, oh, now it's just nine. <laughs> so huge fail. Great. Huge fail. And now I, now I wish I had tested it just with me drawing it on a piece of paper and stuffing it up on Facebook rather than having it made into a vector drawing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so once you decided that was not going to be a thing, then what? The next thing I did was I got in touch with my niece who has a company and she went through this branding process for her company um, probably two years ago now and I remember when she was going through the process she kept sending us all uh, like her family and friends she would say what do you think about these designs and what do you think about these designs and you know which one of these two do you like and so I thought okay well I'm gonna ask her and she used a company called 99 designs so I went on to the 99 design site and that's when I realized she makes an awful lot more money than I make <laughs> because they wanted $300 as the basic package um, pretty much um, out of my it was just too much for what I wanted at that at, at this point in time. So I nixed them and thought, well, maybe now is a good time to discover what all this Fiverr business is about because I didn't know anything about Fiverr. So I got onto Fiverr and uh, started looking around for signature logo designers. And they have dozens of signature logo designers. And they, they, they range in price from $5 to $1,000. And um, some of them will give you re redesigns to, to pick from, and then you can personalize it a little bit or change it up or change colors or whatever. And others offer only one. So you kind of have to go through. It took a long, long time to go through. And I found a fellow that I thought um, offered me the, the best choice. I think I had three, three designs to choose from. And so you give them what you, you, the information that I gave him was, I wanted it to be my initials. So I wanted J.P. McLean. And my tagline is writing addictive fiction. And these are the three that I got. But none of them really reflect me and fantasy writing. I think they just didn't do it for me. So um, that, and that was $12, $12 US. So it was worth trying. I'm very happy I tried it, and I will use them again. But uh, I just didn't get, like I got JP. And even though I went back and asked it to be JP McLean, JPM, um, I was obviously not in the right place for, for what I needed. 
Um, right. So I, I, I've got them. I own, I own those. I can use those, but, um, but they, they didn't reflect what I wanted. So at that point I got a little bit frustrated and um, fluttered, flustered about what am I going to do now? I really don't know where to go to find this. So I started drawing again, <laughs> but now I had a better idea of what to draw. I, got, I had a much better idea of what I was looking for. And so I did that one. And so this is my initials again, and I put the little um, nib, the pen nib, on the end of the J, and the little devil's tail on the M. And that little devil's tail is kind of a reflection of um, the books because there's a little bit of spice in the books. And so I thought, well, this I like this, and I like the uh, the rough marker kind of uh, thing with JPM. And so I, I tested it. It doesn't have my it just has my name. It doesn't have my logo, but I could put, or my um, tagline. I could put my tagline underneath that. So I used that. And my hope was that at some point, if it ever caught on, I could just use the JPM and not have to worry about the rest of it. I could just get away with just JPM. So I tested this one and it got lots of good uh, feedback. So I was happy about that. But I was a little concerned that the little devil's tail was maybe slotting me into an area I didn't want to be slotted into even though I really like the little devil's tail. So I may work with this a little bit more. I don't know, it's just sitting there. I'm not using it, but um, I've got it and people do like it, so. Um, after I did that, I thought, okay, I think I need to um, go back to the drawing board and see if there's, um, when I was looking for book covers, I, I saw a lot of uh, pre-made book covers that were very nice quality uh, book covers. And after you purchase them, they retire the, book cover so I thought well, what if they have that for um for uh, signature logos so mm -hmm. that's what I went in looking for was uh, a, a, a plan like that and I mm -hmm. looked and looked and looked I didn't find anything that quite fit yet there aren't as many as there are um that, that you would find for example on Fiverr uh, there aren't as many sites offering those um brands that you can just um say, ooh, that's me, uh, I'll take that, yeah. and then they'll retire it, and you've got it all done. There aren't, there, aren't, there aren't a lot. So I went through them, I didn't find what I was looking for. But I did find a company called Brand Crowd. And Brown, Brand Crowd, uh, very simple, easy to work with uh, website. What you do is you put in your initials, and it will, cert and then you can, you can narrow down your search for what you're looking for. So I think I put author in. Uh, so I used the initials JPM, author, I put my logo in. And you can you can narrow down your field of search to um, cut down the number of designs that you end up getting shown. I think the first time I tried it, I had 10,000 designs. Wow. And they insert your initials in them. So you can see what they're going to look like. But a lot of it was mm -hmm. not and if that's my one critique or criticism of that website, that would be it, that they give you too much and a lot of it is not what you're looking for. Uh, so you probably just need to learn how to narrow down the search terms um, according right. to what, the, what they've got outlined in, in search term. Um, anyway, I did eventually narrow down it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> they designed for me in the end. I picked that one. I had 10 and, uh, and I thought, that this one was probably the best of the lot. So I own this one now too, mm -hmm. but I, it's not quite right. It's not quite right. So it's, a, it's the closest I could come without spending a fortune. This one cost $29. So yeah. you know, yeah. I'm not really out that much money. Yeah. And I'm getting better at knowing what to look for. <laughs> right. It's not quite there yet. <laughs> so one of the things I, I have a couple questions around sort of what you were asking for or, or using as search terms. So when you were looking at a logo, did you particularly choose something that was more vertical or, or square versus a, a horizontal logo? Like, was that one of the options no. you were inputting? No, no, that isn't an option that you were given on this site. It, it is in Fiverr. You can certainly choose because fiber they give you um, like some of them are watercolor signatures and they will give you a, a big uh, watercolor like your whole signature 
in a beautiful watercolor. And, th and they were quite a lot more expensive. So yes, you, you can certainly do that in Fiverr, not in Brown Crowd. Brown Crowd, you give them your initials and your tagline, and then they give you, um, they just pop your initials in and you just look at what they've got available. Right, right. And in, term in terms of, you know, I said blood red for the color. I didn't really put anything else into it for that. Right. Uh, Brown Crowd. And do you remember offhand, can you put in hex codes as colors? Like, can you specifically request a color by hex code as opposed to a name? Or was it just like choosing? You, no, no, you can because what you do is when I chose that, it actually had the initials, I think Z or JF. And once you click on it, you can then, a little window pops up and you can ask them, you know, can you make this in? you know, JP McLean or JPM with this tagline. And can you, you can, at that point, I said blood red, but you could have put the hex code in there and they would have, and they're very good. They said, sure. And they, and as a matter of fact, when I was working with them, uh, I identified a couple of different ones that I was, I was clicking on them to see how much more I could see before I had to pay for it. Cause I'd like to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And after I had done that, I then got off, off I canceled out of there um, and then I was collecting my I, I wasn't sure what I was going to go with yet and then the next day they sent me a uh, we noticed you were in looking at stuff and um, and and we'd be happy to help you and here's 35 percent off ah. so I, I got 35 percent off nice and I think everyone probably gets 35 well and that's a good that's a good lesson for people online shopping any company worth their salt will have an abandoned cart recovery program, which means that if you add something to your cart, you start going through the checkout process and then you leave, you'll, you'll almost always get a coupon the next day. Uh, Vistaprint is another one that does that. If you um, partially complete your order and leave, you'll get a coupon the next day or even an hour later. So <laughs> this is really fast. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's definite strategy to that for some folks. Um, yeah, good to know. So, so I'm curious, um, which parts of it were resonating, not resonating with you? Like if we just brainstorm a little bit for a minute about where the fit wasn't happening. Um, so what do you, what do you think? Like, do you, do you, cause, cause when I looked at these, I, I mean, I, I know you and I know your work and they also didn't say JP McLean writing to me in terms of like the right tone or feel. So I'm curious. Um, yeah. So the, the tagline is a question. So writing addictive fiction, um, but it doesn't say fantasy anywhere. So I'm curious, was, was fantasy something that you were able to communicate separately to the designers who were coming up with something? Like, was that, did you fill out a form? Did they ask you a bunch of questions about tone or uh, focus for your business or anything else no. before they were designing or it was just like here's yeah okay on Fiverr no you could put anything you wanted in they give you a I think you had something like 500 words to describe your project so you could put all you want in there but what I found was because of the designer I picked I don't think he understood what I had put in there and there's no opportunity to you know go back and back and back I did go back for a revision and ask for a few things. And I, I, it was clear he wasn't understanding even what I was saying. So I think I picked someone that was perhaps not as fluent in English as, um, as would have been um, nice, nice to have. So I right. think it's a, a learning experience on Fiverr and you have to kind of pick somebody. I also think I need to pay more money. Uh, I don't think you're going to get, and I certainly am not getting um, any personalized service at all at $12 and $29. I think realistically, you probably do need to spend $300. And I don't know, maybe you wouldn't be happy with that particular um, project at, at 99 designs. But um, I think there's more opportunity to, if you, if you spend a little bit more money, you might get a little bit tighter fit or closer fit. Because I certainly, I, I just don't think I've got a good fit yet. And you are right. clearly don't think either. So yeah. It's not it's easy not, though. Not like, quite fantasy is not. It's not easy. It's so hard, so hard. And I think yeah. you know, there's lots of elements that are close in several of them. Um, and so it's one of those things where, especially if it's not what you work in all the time, you can feel that it's not quite right. But it's like trying to explain to somebody why you don't like a flavor or a texture. Um, 
and how could you change it to make it better? You know, like it's very much, you have to know the language and you have to know the ingredients and what the options are and whatever else it's trying to, trying to mix a recipe yeah. in a different way. So it is definitely, it's a learned very, skill for sure. <laughs> and I'm very aware of it now. So when I see other people's other authors brands and when I'm uh, flipping through magazines or reading newspaper when I see stuff like that I pay attention to it and I do have a file folder that I, I save stuff to because one of these days I'm gonna see an image and I'm gonna say that's the feeling that I want that's it yeah and, yeah. and I know it yeah I have I have a photograph right now that um, a fellow author had sent me uh, and it is um, you know, a woman with her hair blowing in the wind and ribbons all around. And that's, that's a little too, um, it's a little too frilly for me, but it's the essence of that feeling of wonder that I'm trying to, um, unpredictable wonder that I want to get into that logo. And I just don't know how to do it and I'm not quite sure where to go to from here, but, um, yeah, so any suggestions? I'm, I'm happy to hear them. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think we should do an office hours case study play session where you send me your source files for stuff and we'll just play test it with the group watching and see what kind of different configurations and things we come up with. I think that'd be loads of fun. Um, and it is, I mean, it's one of those well, things okay. where, yeah, let's do it. Um, it's one of those things where I think for anybody out there who's thinking about trying to decide, do I try to do my own? Do I hire somebody? If you have some time and desire to play, then work through the branding tutorials that are in the build your brand section of the creative Academy, because there are some really good, um, examples in there. And, and to give full credit, it was the graphic designer I work with who helped prep all the materials for that course. So she found some amazing examples of different author logos and explained so clearly what works, doesn't work, why they work, don't work and also put together a whole whack of suggestions of fonts for different genres and things like that. So you don't have to start from nothing. You can start from some recommended starting places and um, play around a little bit and just see what you like. Because even if you can get close to what you want and then you can fill in the gaps with words for whoever it is you're hiring, the, the better able you are to communicate what you want, the more your chances of getting what you've asked for. So a Pinterest board with some pictures that evoke the right tone or feeling or, um, you know, any fonts you find online that you like, or you can screen grab other people's logos or, or covers or anything that has something that really resonates with you, then it just gives people that starting place. So if you're out there thinking, I'm going to try one of these other options, the uh, Fiverr or Brand Crowd or whatever, um, the more information you have in advance of knowing what you want, um, the more the likelihood of you recognizing it when you see it when you see it and or being able to influence the person creating it enough that they can actually help you. So um, yeah, well, I want to say thank you for sharing that experience. And we'll put links below this interview with um, the different places that people can go and explore what options might exist. And um, I look forward to seeing anybody who's struggling with the same thing showing up to office hours and we'll do We'll do some case study evaluations with you, or if you want to get feedback on a couple different logos that you've created, you can drop them in the Glib community, or you can come by office hours, and we will absolutely help you choose between different things and, you know, get as many different opinions as possible to see how it's going to land with your readers, for sure. So, yeah, thank you so much, Terrific. Joanne. Thank you and, so much. Um, thank you, Crystal. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye, everybody. Okay, thank Back you so to much. Your writing. Bye now. Thank you for being a part of this Creative Academy event. If you're not a member yet, join us today and unlock a wealth of resources, masterclasses, feedback opportunities, and online community events designed to help you reach the next step in your writing journey. No matter what stage you're at, we've got a helping hand to guide you along the way. Check out our free resource room if you'd like to get a taste of how we can help you reach your writing and publishing goals. Thank you for bringing us along on your writing and publishing journey, and Donna, Eileen, and I hope we'll see you around the Creative Academy soon.